Hello and welcome to another edition of Mailbag. What is Mailbag? Well, Mailbag is a feature of the channel where you guys leave lots of comments on the channel and I attempt to answer those comments or if I can't answer those comments, I throw it out to you guys who have more knowledge on some of this stuff than I do. So, let's get into the first Mailbag of this session. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. Next one comes from Cory303. I wonder if you've got a baseline. Um, and this was in response to Roland MX1, confused by the modes in Sonic EPS 16 Plus, making clicking noises. Um, and Corey writes, uh, oh, by the way, that was a mailbag I did in October 2023. Anyway, Corey writes, um, I think the clicking sound the viewer meant is the EPS infamous envelope zipper noises. The envelopes are relatively low resolution and therefore steppy. The sounds get Amplifier amplitude modulation into the sample which gets audible on the sounds with much high end For example a bass sounds bass sounds or filtered sounds Nothing you can do about it other than finding a release time that minimizes the issue Well all I can say Corey is thanks for jumping in on the thread um and giving some more insight on what might be causing the issues for the original commentator. And obviously that's been fed back to the original commentator. Now, my Insonic 16 Plus is currently in storage and in bits and pieces because I haven't got around to putting it back together. In fact, actually one of those things over there is the floppy drive for the EPS 16 going forward. But, and I've got ribbon cables and all kinds of other spares over there waiting for me to just get on with that project but it has been sitting in, in pieces for a while. And as I said, on numerous occasions before on this channel, my EPS 16 that I bought was, I was basically duped. What I thought I was buying is not what I thought, what, what I got. And I got something that has basically been very hard, worked very hard in the past, but I will get it back to operational health. I am assured I will do that. I just need to, put some time into it and time is something I've been struggling recently with everything that's going on around me in terms of the house and other bits and bobs which will become apparent if you carry on watching the channel whether you'll see that bit before this bit I'm not sure anyway I kind of digress um but if I can bring my EPS 16 back to life or when I bring my EPS 16 back to life I want to go into the whole sort of, because even though sampling is sampling, and you do sampling, it, you know, the, the way you approach sampling is pretty much the same across the board. All these samplers have very, very quirky ways of doing stuff, you know, sampling and looping and, and, and making the tone. Um, and what is very interesting is how, you know, they're, they're talking about here is amplitude mod modulation and zipper noise. You know, that is just a symptom about how the, how you've taken the sample and how it's been looped and compressed. Um, and it's it's it would be really interesting to do a series. I mean, I've got enough samplers to do. I've got Akai samplers, I've got Roland samplers, I've got Yamaha samplers, and I've got, any, I've got EPS samplers, uh, sorry, Entonic samplers. So it'd be really interesting to do a sort of piece across all these different sampling platforms. Um, and then, of course, I've also got the... Uh, the Kronos, the sampling system on the Kronos. So it, I, I don't know how I'd work that video out, how that video or sequence of videos would work out if I'm brutally honest, but it's something I would like to do in the future as time allows. Next comment or question comes from XP50 Player in response to, I had a Korg T3EX for over 25 years. Mailbag I did in February 2024. XP50 player writes, when you already have a room full of gear, you have the luxury of being able to choose about sound quality. The O1 
WFD was my first synth. So the increased polyphony, the tracks and parts were an important consideration. Korg ended up migrating the lacklustre ROM resolution by introducing, among other things, accessories like the best of M&T. Uh, card set, the dance card set was pretty good as well and the Borsendorfer uh, from the piano card set ended up in the ROM of the 88 key 01W Pro X. Korg really dominated the workstation market at the juncture and there weren't many competitors to consider. The S199 was about the nearest thing and they didn't make it in all sizes. No, they didn't. It was a 76 key keyboard and that was it. Um, and you know what? I couldn't agree more with the statement that around this point in time, so this would have been early 90s, late 89, early 90s, Korg pretty much had this market um, sewn up. Um, if you weren't using an M1, you were using a T-Series, and if you weren't using a T-Series, you bought the O1W, which of course we all know was the M10. Uh, just some marketing nerd read the literature the wrong way up. Um, anyway, so I have to be honest, with that. I mean, I've, I've acquired um, recently, well I say recently, within the last 18 months, uh, an SY99, um, which only comes in the 79 note flavour, and the 60, SY77 only comes in the 61 note flavour. Um, and I could go into the pros and cons of each, but it's probably for another discussion. Um, but both of these synthesizers had an audience. Okay, the Yamaha synthesizers had an audience, the Korg synthesizers had an audience. My problem with Korg about this time wasn't the keyboards per se, it was that the progression from keyboard one to keyboard two to keyboard three wasn't great enough to, for, for the professional musician to move on, which is one of the reasons why I think the M1 hang, hung around for so long. Um, it was only when they sort of started coming up with the later versions of the next generation workstations, things started changing. But at this point in time, apart from bigger libraries, bigger memory, etc etc the capabilities of the, of the three iterations wasn't great enough to make you move that's my view anyway but they still held the title of king of workstations at that point in time